Okay, so we are continue to slowly move forward with heroes. <clears throat> I will say I like the heroes uh, Canterbury Tale format, where you can do multiple small groups of people. So, you know, when you're doing an hour-long show, you've got about 40, 45 minutes of actual footage to do. And they, and they do a nice job in just kind of filling in, because you get little snippets here and there. <clears throat> so we'll go with the Noah storyline. Well, they finally meet up with some of the other characters. It's like, okay, they're finally now going to get into Renatus. Okay. They're going to finally find Molly. Okay. They run into the dude who, when he gets cut, clones himself. There's a lot of names to remember, and if I had a, a chart, I could probably remember them all. I actually like to put the name before them. Because so many integral characters are introduced at random times, doing different things. It, it would help a little bit. And Noah shoots three of them. Okay. And it's like, wait a minute, you just you shoot three of them? They turn to powder? Okay, it's different. But they find out what they're doing at Renatus. Essentially, they have a machine that works kind of like Siler. So everyone's plugged in, and they're using their powers. To do what? Molly tells them to, tagline, forget the past, save the future. And then, okay. So we had save the future, save the world, forget the past, save the future. It's also a nice way of saying, remember the shows that happened before? Yeah, you've got Noah. We've explained Noah. You're probably pretty set. Luke and Joanne. These are the, the grieving parents. And of course, Luke is now fully embraced and kind of went, yeah, I've got a power. I absorb solar radiation and I generate, generate it back. Dillinger's in the car. Joanne pulls a gun on him. They kind of separate. Okay. That, that kind of works. Tommy's storyline. He's a teleporter. Remember how his mom got involved in the car accident? I'm trying to tell my wife, whenever you see any shot in a TV show or movie where the camera angle, where two people on a car and it's on a head-on camera angle, it's that side profile shot. If it's a side profile shot, they're probably going to get hit by a car on the side. There's no reason to do a side profile shot of two people having a conversation. It's much easier to do a front shot with two people turning their heads at each other instead of looking right through the camera and showing the background. Well, she needs blood transfusion. And he's like, hey, maybe I'm a match. They check him. Hmm, he's an Evo. We don't have the blood for you. You can go here. He ports with his not-quite-girlfriend yet. Comes back. I got the blood. So he says, think of a place. And he just... Phew. So he stole blood from a blood bank. Feds are there, trying to take him down. Okay. The Carlos section. There's a much better suit now. So he's kind of like poor Iron Man. But he drives an awesome car, like Green Hornet. So he's Green Hornet Iron Man. So it's the direction he's trying to go. The father shows up, who turns into Cloud. Other people show up, and they actually capture Cloud Father. Okay. The, the, the son actually makes it out. You should be able to, since he can pass through solid objects. Which is an interesting power. It's useful. They had that before in the previous ones. So, not bad. It still feels very disconnected from the rest of the series. They have Miko. Well, they decide to make their way to Renatus. They had a humorous conversation in a taxi camp where he's like, you know, there's just be waiting for me to log on right now. 
I have millions of followers who follow what I do online. And the guy's like, so, what sort of pornography are you guys into? And he's like, no, 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 I'm a gamer. Oh. It's almost kind of, it was kind of like, I get smirk, like, ha. Huh. It's a joke. Because the guy driving the car is a little bit old, so he might not understand the idea of Let's Plays. Ha. Huh. So what is their massive plan? Well, he tells his followers to show up at Renatus, dressed as characters from the game. And like a day later, a bunch of people are there, dressed as characters from the game. Cosplaying gamers unite, I guess. And of course, there's still the woman who's trying to control the evil Aurora Borealis, who can make trees grow. That's interesting. The tree itself was a pretty bad looking special effect. Uh, Luke, radiation dude, his ability just seemed like his hands kind of turned white. It was a weird, a weird look to it. Normally, the effects are pretty good in this. Sometimes they're just kind of, oh, that's not bad. You know, this is one that's definitely worth worth sticking with. Probably because you've got enough characters spread out enough. And they do this really wide net. And it's a cone effect. As you're moving forward and forward, storylines are getting tighter and tighter. Until eventually, the last couple, last, couple, last couple episodes of the season, they're all going to be on top of each other. So, oh, all, all in all, it's wrapping up pretty nicely. It's moving at a decent pace. You know, I'm waiting to see how these people all kind of fit together. But, so far, still very interesting.